Good evening everybody, Matt here. It is currently 10 past 10 at night and I thought that I would do another top 6 video based on my favourite fragrances of 2016. Now, the reason I've put 2016 at the end of the name of this video is because uh, in many years to come, maybe sometime this year, um, I do want to be checking out a lot of new fragrances and fragrances that are considered niche fragrances or fragrances that I haven't tried which I, you know, actually might love. So this is just um, a favourite fragrance video of this year and right now. So, and the, obviously these fragrances are in my collection and these are fragrances which I've really done my homework on and I've really worn properly and, you know, I'm really excited to show you guys some of these fragrances. But before I show you the main six fragrances of this list, I do want to sh mention two honourable mentions. Uh, two fragrances which I really do believe deserve a little bit of praise. So, uh, let's get on with this list. Now, the first honourable mention in this video is Balenciaga Pour Homme. Now, I think you guys were probably expecting this because I do show it a lot in a lot of my videos. And for a good reason, because this fragrance really is fantastic. Now, it came out in 1990, it's known as a Woody Oriental, and it was designed by the perfumer Gerard Anthony, who is... Credited for creating Zorro Porom along with a few more perfumers, but he is um, to this day the only credited perfumer for designing that fragrance. It has notes of vanilla, patchouli, cinnamon, oak moss, and it's even got some sandalwood. It really is a beautiful fragrance, and this is one of my favorite vanilla fragrances of all time. It really is a beautiful fragrance. Now, it is discontinued, and it is getting harder and harder to find due to its rarity. Even though it's quite a small bottle, it is beautiful and the juice inside is really high quality. It is going to last you pretty much your whole life because the longevity is really, really good. And it's just considered as a classic masterpiece. And anybody who, you know, is into fragrances and into this fragrance, everybody online, every review you look, people call this the, the great Balenciaga Pour Homme. So it's known as, you know, a gem in the fragrance world. So that is my first honorable mention and it's Balenciaga Pour Homme by Balenciaga. My second uh, honorable mention goes to The Dreamer by Versace. Now this is a gorgeous fragrance. It came out in 1996. It's known as an Oriental Fougère and the perfumer is Jean-Pierre Bathouart. I believe I pronounced that name right but he is also known for creating fragrances like Burberry Touch and he's also known for creating the very beautiful fragrance for women from the house of Givenchy, known as Anger au Demon. It's a really beautiful perfume. If you haven't checked it out, I would highly recommend it because it's quite unisex. Now, this fragrance has notes of uh, tobacco, rose, geranium, and it's also got a little bit of leather in there, along with some rose, lily, and amber. So it's a really beautiful fragrance, but it is considered as a love-hate fragrance, and I think that's due to the fact that it is a little bit synthetic. But it really has got some nice tobacco in there, um, floral tobacco I like to call it because it, to me it reminds me of a, of a rose covered tobacco and it's really really nice and it's just a nice fragrance from the house of Versace but uh, it doesn't get a lot of positive comments and I think that is due to the fact that it is synthetic but uh, it is a nice fragrance and I do believe that this fragrance has been reformulated. This fragrance that I have now is from 2013. And I believe it got reformulated back in 2012, the end of 2012. So, in fact, this was the last fragrance launched by Gianni Versace himself before he was killed in 1996, which is, I think, still absolutely devastating to this day for anyone who's a big fan of the House of Versace. But I think that this fragrance really does have something to offer, so I would highly recommend you check out The Dreamer by Versace. Now let's kickstart this list, guys, with my number six. Now this fragrance is considered as a classic, and it is the one and only Obsession for Men by Calvin Klein. Now this came out in 1986, and the perfumer is Bob Slattery. And as far as I'm concerned, and as far as base notes is concerned, he, this was the only fragrance he's uh, ever made. Uh, and it's a classic, so, you know, to be the only perfumer for this fragrance and you know for this to be his only perfume he's ever created he must be very proud because this has done ever so well throughout the 80s 90s uh, and even present day this is still a good seller for a lot of men around the world it is a mature scent and it is really really beautiful uh, we get notes of mandarin bergamot myrrh clove nutmeg amber cinnamon 
and vetiver and it really is a beautiful warm fragrance it's very sensual could be considered as romantic but also considered as a little bit dated to some people um, but it is a very beautiful fragrance it's very uh, 1980s like it's got 80s written all over it and it really is a beautiful fragrance from the house of Calvin Klein number six on this list goes to the amazing Obsession for Men by Calvin Klein. Now, number five on this list, we're going to go to my favorite house of all time. This comes from Giorgio Armani, and this is the original men's fragrance, uh, Armani Au Pour Homme by Giorgio Armani. Now, this fragrance came out in 1984, and it's known as a Scheibre fragrance. Um, it was made by Roger Pellegrino, who is one of the most famous uh, perfumers in the world. Even though he hasn't made a lot of fragrances, the two that stand out to me... Uh, are Ene Ene by Cacharel, which was a floral fragrance, and also One Man Show by, I've forgotten the name, <laughs> Jacques Bogart. Um, this is a very nice fragrance. I think it's a little bit similar to the likes of, you know, Pour Monsieur by Chanel, and it's a little bit similar to Baijan for Men. Those are two fragrances which I uh, really like, but they are very similar to this. Now, it does have notes of Sicilian lemon, lavender, oak moss, sandalwood and clove so it's a very strong masculine fragrance it's not very um pungent though it's not like a pungent fragrance it's not like kuros or something like that but it's very nice it's got some gorgeous lemon in there some beautiful lavender and it's a really really nice fragrance uh it just screams class to me and i really really enjoy wearing this uh i'm actually wearing this right now and it smells really good so check out uh armani au pour homme by Giorgio Armani, guys, because this is a really good fragrance. Number four on this list, guys, we have Dune Pour Homme by Christian Dior. Now, this fragrance came out in 1997, and this is what I would call uh, an aquatic woody fragrance. Um, it's made by perfumer Oliver Cresp, or Olivia Cresp, I believe that's how his name is pronounced. And he's designed fragrances, uh, the, the, the most famous fragrance he's designed is uh, Angel by Thierry Mugler. And he's also designed fragrances like Black Excess by Paco Rabanne, Fuel for Life by Diesel, and also the brilliant fragrance, which I've always, always loved, uh, is Attitude by Giorgio Armani. He's made some pretty decent fragrances. Now, this fragrance has a lot of leaf-based uh, based notes in. It's got fig leaves, basil leaves, and also black currant leaves, uh, along with moss, sage, fig tree wood, sandalwood, cedarwood and tonka bean so the, the main note you get in this fragrance is the the fig and it's absolutely beautiful like i've smelled a lot of fig based fragrances but this one to me stands out the most and this is actually one of the most unpopular men's fragrances from dior um it's definitely not like dior Homme or fahrenheit or Alf sauvage for that matter um but it really is a gorgeous fragrance a uh, very classy man's fragrance um it's just absolutely beautiful and the longevity on this is very very good this lasts me all day and I only need one spray I mean I've had this bottle for a couple of years as you can see I've only used maybe like 90% of it so uh, not 90% 10% I should say sorry bloody hell if it was 90 it'd be down there <laughs> but uh, it's a really nice fragrance and if you're a classy man and you want to impress someone then this is definitely a fragrance you need to try could, it could be a little bit loud um, but if you don't drown yourself in it, you will smell very sophisticated. So I would highly recommend you check out Dune Pour Homme by Christian Dior. The next one, we are going to go straight to the house of Chanel. And this is one of the only fragrances from the house which I really, really like. I mean, they're all fantastic from Chanel. But I've really enjoyed this one for a long time. This is Antaeus. Now, Antaeus came out in 1981 and it's known as a leather fragrance. It's made by Jacques Polge, who's also designed Coco by Chanel. Um, Chanel Paul Monsieur by Chanel. He's also made in both of the men's and women's fragrances known as uh, Allure, also by Chanel. And he's also well known for creating um, Rive Gauche by Yves Saint Laurent. Now this fragrance has notes of clary sage, myrtle, uh, patchouli, uh, labdanum and also beeswax. Now I could not tell you in a million years what beeswax smells like but this is a very good fragrance. It's got some lemon in there, even though it's not listed, I don't think, but lemon is very uh, visible in this scent. We get lemon, we get this very animalic leather fragrance. Uh, it's quite peppery, but it's a very pungent fragrance. So 
you do have to be careful on the spray, but it's very masculine and it's very classic. Like, just, it's really, really beautiful. It does smell very classy and it lasts for a hell of a long, a long time. Every time I wear this, I get compliments. And uh, I actually put this uh, fragrance in my top six elegant fragrances, I believe. And uh, it's definitely up there. Like, it's just a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. So I would highly recommend you check out um, Antaeus Porom by Chanel. Now, number two on this list, guys, comes from a sample that um, Travis from Zenovia Senses sent me. It was one of the first fragrances that I really fell in love with, along with all the other samples that he'd sent me. This is another fragrance from the house of Balenciaga. This is Cristobal Porom. Now, I had to involve this in the list because this is one of the most classiest, elegant fragrances and most unique fragrances that I've ever smelled. Um, it's an Oriental Woody. It was launched in... 2000 and it's made by Gerard Anthony who's also known again for Balenciaga Pour Homme and he's also made a Zara Pour Homme as well. Um, it's got some bergamot in there, tea, coffee, coriander, nutmeg, geranium, sandalwood, tobacco, ambergris, <laughs> sorry my laptop went off, benzoin and some vanilla. So very very beautiful. Um, it really is gorgeous. Like. I just get this classy smell. It's smelling it right off the top. I'm getting that um, that bergamot. It's so zesty and fruity. It's just oh, you could eat it. It's so nice, and I'm getting that kind of tea mixed in with it, with that coriander and that benzoin, and you can definitely detect the vanilla as well. But the vanilla doesn't come until the dry down. But it's just so beautiful, guys. So this is number two on my list. It's Cristobal Porom by Balenciaga. Now we've come to number one. I think you guys pretty much know what it is. If you don't already, well, we're about to get there. This one comes from the house of Ted Lepidus. Lepidus? Lepidus? Blah, blah, blah. Never said it like that before, but it comes from the house of Ted Lepidus. It was launched in 1987. And I cannot pronounce the perfumer's name. I think this is right. I think it's Jacques uh, Konikia or something strange like that. Like Kanoka or something. I don't know. But uh, he is, this is the only fragrance he's ever created. Um, it's got le notes of lemon, pineapple, honey, rose, jasmine, lavender, sandalwood, and patchouli. And this is the one and only truly fantastic Lapidus Porom. It doesn't get mentioned a lot for being an amazing fragrance, unless you look on base notes where literally all the comments are just, you know, masterpiece this, masterpiece that. And it really is. Like, if I had to say, if, think of a fragrance that was really similar. I would say uh, Santos de Cartier by Cartier. I think that's how you pronounce it, Cartier or something. But I've tried that fragrance before and it's very strong, very pungent fragrance. And this fragrance, I think, is very similar to that. Apart from this, has notes of honey and it's also got that pineapple and lavender in there. But it's absolutely beautiful. I think if you're a fan of Kuros by Yves Saint Laurent, you need to try out Lapidus Porom immediately. Even though it's cheap, the juice in this fragrance is so superb. And it's got some really beautiful pineapple in here. But the honey is what makes it. Like, it's so uh, creamy. It's so sexy. It's just beautiful. Like, I think of Magnum P.I. I think of all the 80 stars that have, that, you know, they just all come to mind when I, when I smell this fragrance. It's absolutely beautiful. And I really really like this fragrance so guys if you've enjoyed this list let me know what you think of it and uh, let me know what your top six fragrances of 2016 would be i really hope you've enjoyed this list guys let me know what you think of this video and i will definitely get back to you with the comments so guys thank you so much for watching it really does mean a lot keep smelling good good night and have a pleasant evening thanks a lot guys Bye bye